Good enough. Thank you. Like <laughs> and subscribe. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Welcome back to channel. Today I've had a few requests about our solar system, so I thought it'd be a great time to do a one year update on the grow watt inverter that we have. It is the kind with a bit large transformer and it's a 12K. Split phase, 12240. We've had it hanging on the wall now for one year. This month makes one year and it's run 24 seven nonstop. It's, it has never been shut off from the time we hung it on the wall to now. And it still hasn't ever been turned off. We run everyday household appliances with it uh, we run a mini split everything in the house is electric except for the oven it will power an electric oven we just have not swapped it over to electric oven it's still gas right now so but we we do have plans to put an electric oven in i'll show a clip of the mini split once the sun goes down and no solar coming in i'll show a clip of the mini split running and i'll show you where the batteries are at and then in in the morning, I'll show you another clip of how much power it actually pulled out of the batteries to run that mini split all night long. It's a 18K mini split. It's uh, one of the cheap ones off of eBay. It uses a lot, a lot of power. It, that thing's power hungry, but uh, it was the cheapest one I could find at the time. It, it does work good. It works really good. It cools the house. It heats the house. It works really good, but it does use a lot of power. A lot of people do the videos. They won't show you exactly how much power, like how much it pulls off your batteries overnight or whatever. And it makes you wonder, you know, how much power does it use? But I'll show you. I'll show exactly what my meter says tonight and I'll show what it says in the morning. That way you'll know exactly what percentage my batteries drops to. Drops to. All right, guys. As you can see, the batteries are at 98% right now. And it's just now getting dark outside. There's no solar coming in whatsoever right now. See, I'm actually using 10 amps right now in the house to run the house 500 watts to run Everything's running inside the house now, which is she's in the shower. So that's the shower the pump Refrigerator freezers lights TVs both TVs are on internet box, you know stuff with normal household stuff. We're running 550 watts Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn our mini split on I'm, I'll turn it off I want to turn it on. I'll show you how much it's pulling and then I want to show you in the morning, I'm going to do an update in the morning and show you where it went from 98% now, where the battery is right in the morning when it runs the, the 18K mini split, which is not energy efficient whatsoever. It's one of the worst ones you can possibly buy. It was a cheap one off eBay, but I mean, it works. So, but it pulls a lot of power, a lot of power. So it's running 550 watts right now. I'm going to turn this mini split on and I'll show you. I'm going to set it on 72 degrees and then uh, I'll show you where it's at. And then in the morning we'll look at it again to see how much battery storage it used. Alright guys, there's the head unit, inside unit. 72 degrees, sort of set. Kicked on. Alright, you can hear it. Alright, let's go over and see how much power it's pulling off the batteries right now. Okay, as of right now, the battery's at 97%. We're pulling 32 amps out of the batteries, 1600 watts is what we're pulling from the batteries right now to run everything including the mini split so anyway like i said we'll come back in the morning and we'll see how much this has went down from my eg4 batteries so we'll see all right guys 7 30 the next morning as you can see the batteries only got down to 84 percent and that you know that's excellent mini split running all night long as much power as that thing uses that's that's excellent sun's just not coming out good and it's starting just now starting to a little bit of a charge out but as you can see it's still used 25 amps 27 amps for the next hour or so the batteries will be chart you know charging it once again so should should be back fully charged by noon one o'clock give or take all right guys it's about 2 30 today and as you can see the batteries are completely charged they've been charged ever since 12 30 one o'clock so from last night the mini split running all night long we left it on all night long just to show you what you just show you what it would drop down to but as of right now we're fully charged back to 1200 amp hours 100 percent charge on the batteries we have over 60 kilowatts of storage in our batteries and we have 1200 amp hours of storage so that's how much battery storage we have all right guys this here's the 12k like i said this thing we installed it this month a year ago so it's been on here a year 
like I said, we have 12 EG4 batteries. I have 12 solar panels run into this. They're, they're series together make 150 volts that runs into here. I only have one string hooked up. As far as complaints with this unit right here, I have a couple, but like I said, I have 12 solar panels run into this, 150 volts. And I think it's, uh, it'd be 150 volts out at 3000 watts. It runs, runs just on one leg in here. And I have basically the same run through this Midnight Classic right here. I just don't like the way it charges. That's the reason I have this Midnight hooked up too. And then I wanted to experiment with a higher voltage as far as like solar panels and charging and stuff goes. So I wanted to go up to like 400, 500 volts, which brings this thing here into play, this AG4 charge controller. This thing will hand, handle up to 500 volts and it will charge at 100 amps. All right. I have, I want to say, it's got 370 volts coming into it right now. But on a good, it's kind of overclass and cloudy because they've been calling for clouds and rain and stuff for the last week. But anyway, on a good day, this thing is pumping out like 460, 480 volts on a good day. And uh, I can't really show you the charging because the batteries are topped off, of course. But this thing, this right here is, is, I highly recommend these things too if you want to try a higher voltage. That way you don't have to run a, such a large wire from your panels. I have a 10 gauge wire run from the panels through the breakers, of course, and the end of this. So it's 10 gauge wire all the way from the panels all the way to this. <clears throat> and at 500 volts. And this thing actually actually lays the juice to them batteries. I'll leave a link to it too. And I do recommend this if you want, like I said, if you want to try a higher voltage. This thing right here really, really, really does its job. And what I really like about this is whenever the sun goes down and it doesn't read at least 120 volts, this thing will power down. It'll completely shut down. That way it's not sitting here all night long drawing power off your system. It'll completely shut down. Once it hit, it doesn't see 120 volts, it'll shut off. And the next morning when the sun hits the panels again, 120 volts, it'll basically, it'll turn itself right back on. All right. And this thing right here, it'll handle up to, I want to say it's 150 volts too. But I know it'll handle up to 150 volts because I've got, Right now it's got 119 volts coming into it. And it's on float charge, of course. And 10.5 on float charge. These things right here, these Midnight Classics, these are, man, these things right here will be around forever because you just, honestly, you just cannot beat them in that Classic. This thing right here is my go-to on everything. But I do like the Signature Solar stuff, you know, the AG4 stuff and the Growlot stuff. I want to, one day I want to replace this inverter with the 18K AG4. I want to do that, but financially I can't do that right now. So one day I will be able to, and I hope this thing here lasts, you know, for years to come because this thing is a monster. It'll power anything that we want to power here on this mountain. This thing right here, I, I want to say it surges up to 36,000 watts. I, I'll have to recheck that, but it's it's a massive surge on this thing. It has a transformer in it that goes back here, down to here. I mean, it's just a great big transformer that's built into it, very heavy. It took three of us to put it on the wall. One on each side holding it and me screwing it down. So I do recommend putting it on a fireproof backing, you know, back here, like a concrete board or something like that. I have it just straight on three quarter inch plywood, which has worked perfectly fine. It does, it, it gets hot. Don't get me wrong, it does get hot, but it don't get hot enough for me to be concerned about it. But they do recommend you put it on a concrete backboard, fireproof board. And uh, like I said, I do have it on plywood and it's, I ain't, I've got no complaints with it. I, I, it just doesn't get hot enough for me to worry about it. Cause it, you just heard the fans kick on and it'll cool, it'll cool itself. Once it reaches a certain temperature, both them fans come on, it sound like a jet engine taking off in here and it cools it. That's bringing me to my second complaint is the fans in this thing are extremely loud. With it being inside the house, you know, you can hear it through the house. But we're used to it, it doesn't bother us. But I mean, it's, it's definitely loud and you can hear it. I think the only other complaint I really have with it is whenever like you hit a hard load, a, a big load on it at one time, the, you'll hear you'll hear it click like it's almost like something's kicking on inside of it or something. It's, but I haven't really noticed it till for the last couple months. It sounds like it's either it hasn't been there. I'm just now starting to notice it. One of the two, and uh, I'll throw a clip of that on here too, where like we kick the mini split on and the sound that you hear like the thump inside the machine. Alrighty, guys, you can hear the inverter. Nothing's running on it right now, other than you know the lights and refrigerator and stuff like that. Um, you can hear the inverter, it's not making any sounds whatsoever right now. Okay, if, you, if you'll go ahead and turn that on, listen to the inverter. I thought you hear that, like, like that. 
it only does that when you get a like a hard load on it and i mean that's really not a hard load that mini split is not but it's hard enough to get it to make that sounds like boom, like it's something kicking on inside of it or something like that and uh I'm sure it's been doing it, and I've just really started noticing it more and more lately. Well, I mean, it's not affecting it in any way, but I can definitely hear it when it does it. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe somebody can comment down in the comments down below and let me know if theirs does that. If that's natural. You know, this thing's been running for a year. And uh, just for the last couple of months is when I've noticed it. You know, it, it, it is affecting it in any way, but it just kind of makes you go, hmm. But it doesn't affect the way it works or anything like that. Um, well, I mean, I, have, I do have one more complaint with the Grow Watt brand. And uh, I run several Grow Watt inverters. And another complaint that I have with the Grow Watt is light flickers with, with the LED bulbs. Some people say it's a certain type, of, it's a certain type of LED bulbs, but it does it with every bulb I've ever put in here. And Grow Watt's the only one so far that I've used that <clears throat> causes light flicker. It's, it's just a real uh, split millisecond, but I can tell, I can see it. Like when a, a, something kicks on, the lights flicker just a little bit, and I don't know what, what the deal with that is. But other than that, this thing runs electric hot water heaters, mini splits, the entire house. <clears throat> you know, drop cords, tools, anything that we run here, this thing right here runs it. So I have to recommend this thing. I don't, I don't even know if they still sell these on the website. I haven't checked yet or not, but I need to look before I go to advertising too much for them. But I do recommend this this right here. It, the only thing I don't like about this is the dislikes I have about it, but it's very heavy. It's kind of bulky, but I mean, I mean, you just can't beat it for the price. I mean, this thing's, it's, it's, it's awesome, it really is. But like I said, one day I do plan on going with the EG4 brand 18K that they have out, or possibly the 12K, I don't know yet, we'll see. Like I said, this is just a one-year review on that inverter. I, I'm going to have to recommend it. I really am. Uh, so I'm going to throw some links down in the description of the video of where you can get it. And you can use my discount code if you want to use it. But anyway, you do get a discount on it if you use my, my link to Signature Solar. As far as solar panels, we have 36 250-watt panels, which comes out to be, what, 9 kilowatts, 9,000 watts of panels. And we did buy those used from Santan Solar. That's the only part of our solar system that did not come from Signature Solar. They did come from Santan Solar. And I'll leave links to those in the description too if anybody wants to check them out. I mean, everything in here runs just like you would on a normal on-grid type situation. And everything comes off that inverter. So like I said, I do have to recommend that inverter. I do have to recommend Signature Solar's products because I've had extremely good luck at them. The batteries, the AG4 batteries, I've had extremely good luck with those things. I basically set them in our wire them together and turn them on and I have not touched them since. I do not use the, uh, the communication hub. I, I don't use that. Some people want to argue I should. Some people want to argue that I'm fine, but this is the way I use it. I'm not telling you not to use yours. I'm not telling you to go pl unplug all your batteries or nothing like that. But uh, I don't use the communication part of that because it has an internal built-in BMS. If it undercharges or overcharges, it's going to fix itself. All right. Well, that being said, I'm like I said, I'm not telling you to go either way i'm just telling you the way i use it the eg4 charge controller that i use i have to recommend that thing because it's it's a monster too like i said i do want to eventually switch over to the 18k because with even with it being 18k it's still a 12k inverter it can just handle 18 kilowatts of solar into it that's i mean i don't understand why they call it like they should just call it a 12k inverter but they didn't so anyway i do plan on going with that Eventually, we do live 100% on solar power. Everything here is solar powered, and we we live we live comfortable on solar. So, alrighty, guys. If you haven't done so yet, please hit that like and subscribe button. It don't cost anything to do, and it'll help us out a little bit. And we will catch you on the next one. Like and subscribe. There you go. Good job.